sharing the screen sharing yes sir okay so um yesterday i discussed about the administrative law okay comprehensively but uh, i wasn't able to finish it but i'm going to continue what i have discussed okay but i'll just give you a background first of the administrative law okay when we say administrative law is actually law governing the employees in the government okay so this would cover the mayor and those who are both elective and appointed position okay so well that actually governs for how um the chief executive local chief executive and including those who are appointed by the president okay they are governed by this law okay, known as the administrative law okay but what is common in in that discussion is the the the, the word ministerial and discretionary okay when we say ministerial meaning the chief executive the head of the agency or the local chief executive as the case maybe if it is appointed or elected position has no other option but to sign it it's called a ministerial duty okay for example if the requirement for this for the permit is already complied then the person has no other option but to sign it Okay, so that is ministerial. When you say discretionary, he has the choice whether to grant it or not. If he grants it, then he will be responsible. So it's important to know it because there are different remedies that may be applied. Okay, for example, if it's a ministerial duty and he did not sign that ministerial duty or permit, then you can go to court for 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 mandatory. Okay it's a, a compuls, com, compulsion for him to sign oh, but if it's discretionary discretionary then you have other you have an, an option of filing a case of grave abuse of discretion okay those are the the implication of knowing what are those mandatory and discretionary uh, discretionary and ministerial duty now in that discussion as well okay it was actually in a previous um discussion okay, in upper part but i just jump into the the later portion okay there are actually functions of a domestic agency but i will not discuss in detail it is thoroughly discussed in the previous discussion okay but in general so that you understand later on what i'm going to discuss is is the function of the administrative agency which is judicial quasi-judicial and quasi-legislative okay when you say quasi-legislative the executive branch has the duty to implement the law right it is their job to implement the law but if the law passed by congress is not clear the administrative agency has the option to legislate okay we call it as the quasi legislative function they can make a law when the law passed by congress is not clear then they can implement it clearly by passing a, an IRR or implementing rules and regulations. Okay, that is quasi legislative function. How about quasi judiciary? In case of a conflict, there are departments which may seek to controversy based as well on the function of a quasi legislative. So, since they are the one who makes the law, they also have a function of quasi judicial, meaning they also function as a court, quasi court. It's not a real court, but it can resolve conflict within within the agency that's the meaning of quasi judicial what's the pr purpose of distinguishing it it has also significant significance in relation to an action that you're going to file okay so if it's a, a function based on quasi judicial then you, have, you can go to court but if it's only quasi legislative function meaning on the implementation of the law then you cannot go to court but you have to exhaust first all the administrative remedies what does it mean by exhaustion of administrative remedies you have to go first into the level to the highest level of the administration okay before you go to court okay. in fact if there are court administrative cases filed in an agency 
you cannot go directly to civil service. It will be remanded back to the agency where it come from. Example, um, I will not will not mention uh, the school where we come from, although it's in a government agency. Now let's say other JSIS, for example, you cannot go directly to the to civil service for the conduct of its for the um, bad conduct of the employee. Why? Because the JSIS as a government institution is an agency which the civil service will always respect, okay, based as well on the expertise. The civil service employee or legal department has no full knowledge of the intricacies within the agency. So that's why they're going to remand it back to the to the agency okay, where the, the case belongs. Now, what we call it also as the doctrine of primary jurisdiction, what is doing by the doctrine of primary jurisdiction? Okay. Now, there's a word here. Okay, this doctrine states that the courts cannot or will not determine the controversy which requires inter expertise, special skills, and knowledge of the proper administrative bodies because technical matters of intricate question of fact are involved. Okay, this is the one I'm talking about. Even the civil service will not will not take cognitions on cases where the head where the administrative agency has the technical specialized skills and knowledge of the proper administrative bodies. So so you, you know you know what to do. Like a complaint, for example, about government employee, you cannot go directly to civil service. Okay. Why? Because they do not have the expertise, skills, specialized skills and knowledge of the proper administrative bodies. So they, they will remand it back first. But on criminal aspect, of course they can. But on the administrative aspect, they, they cannot. Okay, what do you mean by administrative aspect? Like a question of the performance of an employee, then it will be, it cannot be questioned in the court. It can only be questioned in the administrative agency. Okay. So, but on criminal aspect, like uh, a violation of the law, since the enemy is the state, then it can go directly to court. Another um, concept of this uh, doctrine of primary jurisdiction, relief must first obtain in administrative proceeding before a remedy will be supplied by the court, even though the matter is within the proper jurisdiction of the court. Okay, so you cannot ob obtain judgment if, for example, there is still a pending case in the administrative agency, court will dismiss it or it, 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 it has no jurisdiction. The administrative agency is the proper um, forum to discuss the, the matter. A relief must first be obtained by the administrative proceedings before a remedy will be supplied by the court, even though the matter is within the proper jurisdiction of the court. So even if the court has jurisdiction over it, but since the administrative agency has a concurrent jurisdiction, then it will first be the decision of the administrative agency will be respected. And only then when the court take cognizance, when you don't have any, uh, you find it, um, when you still have other options in the administrative agency. Okay. So, what do you mean by doctrine of prior resort? When a claim of original cognizable in the courts involves issue which under the regulatory scheme are within the special competence of the administrative agency, judicial proceedings will be suspended pending the referral to this issue to the administrative body for its view. Okay, so issues. Uh, which is within the regulatory power. Okay, what do you mean by within the regulatory power? Like granting of a permit or um, let us say franchise. Okay, you cannot go to court. You it will still be resolved within the administrative agency, like uh, LTFRB. If if it's a franchise on the use of uh, a, a road or a 
certificate of public convenience um, granted to a jeepney operator. Okay, so it will be suspended depending the referral of this issue to the administrative body for its view. Okay, note the doctrine of primary jurisdiction and prior resort have been considered to be interchangeable. So, doctrine of primary jurisdiction is also known as the doctrine or the prior resort. You cannot go to court unless or if there is still an administrative agency has jurisdiction. Next, we go to, in relation to that, we have a doctrine known as the doctrine of exhaustion of administrative remedies. What does it mean? Under this doctrine, an administrative decision must first be appealed to the administrative superiors up to the highest level before it may be elevated to a court of justice for review. Okay, for example, if your permit was not given by the by the, the Department of, in, of Environment and Natural Resources, okay, so you cannot go to court. You go first to the highest level of the administrative agency, where the secretary of the DNR, okay, before it can be reviewed by the court. That is called the doctrine of exhaustion of administrative remedies. Okay, only when the, you don't have any other choice or you don't have any other remedy, there's a time that you can go to court. What's the reason? The reason is to enable administrative superiors to correct the errors committed by their subordinates. Second is court should refrain from disturbing the findings of administrative bodies in difference to the doctrine of separation of powers. What do you mean the separation of powers? The court belongs to the judicial branch, but the different secretary or administrative agency belongs to the executive branch. They always should respect, okay, because these three um, bodies or organ or branch of the government should not um, cross the line. Courts should not be saddled with the review of administrative cases and court is a judicial review of the administrative cases is usually effected through special civil actions which are available if there is no other plain, speedy, and adequate remedy. Okay? You can go to court only when you file, when there is grave abuse, okay, and which is a special civil action. What are the exceptions to the rule? Okay, when the question is raised purely legal, involves constitutional question. That is the time when you can go to court. Okay, you may not um, exhaust all the administrative remedies. Okay, so take note if if the question is legal, purely legal on the matter of law, and involves constitutional question, meaning a perhaps a violation of the constitutional law, then you can go to court directly without exhaustion of the administrative remedies. Now, the the second is when administrative body is stopped. What do you mean by stop? Cannot, cannot proceed anymore or he is now, um, he claimed to be or and in reality he has no other choice or when he said that he is, he has no right or jurisdiction to decide over it. Okay, he benefited from that, and later on he claimed to be having a a jurisdiction. So he is now stuck. Okay, so you will not forget that stuck because it's almost similar to the word stop. Okay, stop meaning you, you can no longer proceed because you 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 claim to be you don't have any authority and you benefited from that claim, and later on you claim that you have it. Okay, after benefiting. So that claim of having habit is now stuck. Okay, so you can no longer proceed the having jurisdiction, even if in reality you have. And then let us see when the act complaint is patently illegal. Okay, so if it's illegal, clearly it's a question of laws in it. So it will be resolved within the proper court. When there is an urgent need for judicial intervention, okay? or when the need arises, it's really important to intervene. Otherwise, 
lives of the parties will be at stake. So when claim is involved, it's, it's small, okay, and then when irreparable damage is involved, when there is no other plain or speedy adequate remedy, when the strong public interest involved, when the subject of controversy is a private land, okay. So example is a core warrant of proceeding uh, when the administrative remedy is permissive, concurrent, and after disregard of due process, long continued unreasonable delay, amount involved is relatively small, okay, when the administrative review is provided, a okay, respondent is department secretary, okay. So, um, can, can, can the court um, take cognizance when the, when the subject matter is on, you, when you are questioning the when, the, when the respondent is a department secretary, okay, can you go to the court immediately? What is the answer? Dum dum. What's the answer? Dum dum. No, sir. You can't go to the court directly. Huh? No. Oh, what's another answer? If the respondent is the secretary, can you go to court directly? Let us say it's a investigative case, but the respondent is a secretary of the DENR. Will you still go? Will you still exhaust administrative remedy? Any volunteer? Volunteer? Wala. Wala. We'll call another student. The answer is, you cannot. Why? Because the, the secretary is the alter ego of the president. Okay, you cannot the alter ego under the principle of uh, doctrine of qualified political agency or the alter ego he is the other president the court is equal with the president you cannot question uh, you cannot you cannot question the secretary because higher than the secretary is the president and the president is the secretary is the alter ego of the president okay so you can go directly to court if the if the respondent meaning he is your enemy in a court proceeding he you are going to question him or his decision meaning is the respondent so you you can go to court because there's no there's no highest higher authority than the secretary because the secretary itself is the president there is what i'm talking because the secretary is the alter ego of the president. He is the other president on the on, on that aspect. Okay, on the department he is heading. Okay, the department head is what we call as the secretary. Okay. Now what do you mean by substantial evidence? Defined to mean not necessarily preponderant proof as required in ordinary civil cases, but such kind of relevant evidence which is reasonable mind might accept as adequate to support a conclusion okay so what is required in an administrative cases is only substantial evidence in criminal what is required for the conviction of the accused is proof beyond reasonable doubt okay so in administrative what is necessary for for a for a an employee to be to be convicted or um, uh, to be convicted is only substantial evidence. And what's the meaning of substantial evidence? Relevant evidence, which a reasonable mind must accept as adequate to support a conclusion. Okay, in a criminal, it is a proof beyond reasonable doubt. There's no reason, there's no iota of doubt that he is the one committing the crime. Okay, by then, when you are 99% assurance that he is indeed guilty, then you can you can promulgate a judgment of conviction. That is in a criminal case. Okay, a proof beyond reasonable doubt. There is no doubt at all 
But here, in an investigative case, it's only a substantial evidence, relevant evidence, which a reasonable mind might accept. In a civil case, like claim of a private property of who owned it, is a preponderance of evidence. Okay, the more evidence, the more chances of winning. Okay, the more interest you send. But this, of course, it should be very relevant evidence. Now, we, what is administrative code in the Philippines? Okay, the civil code of the Philippines is a general law and incorporates in a unified document of the major structural, functional, and procedural principles of governance. Okay. The code is divided into seven books. Okay, these books contain the provisions of the organization, powers, and civil administration of department, bureaus, and offices under the executive branch, the organization and functions of the constitutional commissions and other constitutional bodies, the rules on the national government budget, as well as guidelines for the exercise by the administrative agencies of quasi-legislative and quasi-judicial powers. Okay. Now, there is a a question okay, normally um, faced by the the head of the agency, okay? Because let, let us say, okay, here this actually I'm referring actually to to the upper portion. I discussed this thoroughly, but. I'm going to repeat it so that you will understand. This is very basic. Okay. Now, the chief, the local chief executive has, of course, he, he can grant permit or he has even the right to abate noisance. What do you mean by no abate noisance? Abating of noisance. There are two kinds of noisance, the noisance per se and noisance per accidents. Noisance per se meaning um, it is the presence of um, a person or a um, an example of, of a mad dog. Okay, a mad dog is a nuisance per se, meaning anybody can, can can stop or even kill that mad dog. Okay, because the, the mad dog itself is a nuisance per se. Okay. So there's also what we call as the nuisance per accident. It is not illegal, but the situation where it was located, it becomes illegal. Okay. Example, having a factory inside the subdivision is not it's not illegal. It's is having a factory is not illegal, right? It's good. But if you put that factory inside a subdivision, that becomes a nuisance. Okay, nuisance per accident. Okay, what do you mean by nuisance per accident? It becomes a nuisance on the act or on the place where it was located. But in itself, it's not nuisance. As distinguishes from the one I'm talking about, the mud dog. Anywhere it goes, wherever it, is, it will be. It's always it always pose danger to the health or to the safety of the people. So it becomes a nuisance. Okay, nuisance per se. Okay. The other one is the nuisance per accidents. So what are you going to do? Supposing if, if you are the the mayor. Okay, so you have to abate the nuisance. Okay, but if if it is and if it is a noisance per accident, it must first be settled in court before it will be abated, meaning it will be stuck or transferred to another place. Okay. So there must be a court proceeding to determine whether it is indeed a noisance per se or a noisance per accident. If it is a noisance per accident, then there will be a court proceeding. The mayor cannot write there and then um stop it okay because it still requires the judgment of the court to determine whether that noisance is indeed noisance per se or noisance per accident now how about the granting of the permit okay let us say um, a, a poultry a poultry in the barangay who grants the permit by the way 
who grants the permit who grants permit Kisah mata aku permit Anybody? Wala, oh I'll for 5 points I'm going to ask you if you know the answer Who grants the permit? For a Let us say um, poultry In a Kisah mai mu firma Mu grant o permit Wala. Barangay Captain sir. Ha? Huh? Oh yeah, Barangay Captain and the other one. Aside from that, Barangay Captain. Of course, the final say is the mayor, right? Yes. Okay. You have to get a permit from Ade, but they, the last signature there will be the mayor. Now, um, if the person already complied with the requirements, like all the requirements except the signature of the mayor, what, what, can the mayor do? Should he sign? Should he exercise what kind of duty? Ministerial or discretionary? Still, ministerial or discretionary? In the case of rubly shipping versus the RS3, okay, the answer is there. They said that it is. It's not a. It is not discretionary. No, no. It's not. It's not ministerial, but a discretionary. Okay. So you read the case and tell me next meeting. Okay. What What is the power of the mayor? Should he exercise? Um, is Is his power discretionary or ministerial? Let us say when you comply already with all the requirements, should you have any other other choice or you don't have any other choice but to sign it if you already comply with the requirements okay so in that case a rule is with RS3 of the domos the decision is that it is a, a discretionary power of the mayor okay so um it's actually their business okay but the other mayor did not grant the this the, the permit okay so aside from politics, well, there's a law as well. It's indeed a discretion of the mayor whether to grant the permit or not. Now, so I will not discuss the upper portion. You just read the, the uh, watch the video later and then go to upload. Okay, what is an administrative order? It's an ordinance okay, issued by the president, okay, which relates to the specific aspect of the administrative operation of the government. Okay, so sometimes called the executive order. The purpose is implementing the law and carrying out of the listed policy. Okay, so there are definitions here, but I will not, but I will not um, read it. Okay, you just read for yourself, otherwise we'll consume the time of discussing very important portion. Okay. okay. When will the government not validly invoke the rule that prescription does not run against the state? Okay. Um, if you... If there is a claim against some against the state, can it be can it prescribe? Like when you file a, a complaint, there are prescriptive period. Okay, like for example, if a light fence in a criminal case, it only be within a certain year. Otherwise, you can no longer file it anymore. Okay, in 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 government as well, there is a prescriptive period. When we, the government, not validly invoke the rule, the rule, the prescription does not run against the state. Okay, so meaning any time the government can file a case, and that filing of the case that not, does not prescribe. Okay, so when, when is that exemption? So take note of that. Huh? When the government in active cases 
even if the action already for let us say 20 years still government can can file a case okay the action does not prescribe okay while it is true that the prescription does not run against the state the same may not be invoked by the government in this case since it's no longer interested in the subject matter okay this is in the case of camp wallace Okay, while Camp Wallace may have belonged to the government at the time Rafael Galvez's title was ordered cancelled by the land registration case, the same no longer holds true today. Okay. The government no longer has the right of interest to protect. Consequently, the Republic is not the real party in interest and that it may not uh, institute an instant action. So if even if it can file an action, but if the government is no longer interested on it, then it then then, then the the rule which it the with the rule which states that the action of government does not prescribe is not applicable when it's not interested anymore in filing the case. So again, when you file against when the government file a case against somebody, like in this case the VCDA it cannot prescribe the exemption is when it's when the government is no longer interested okay so i'm going to post this again and the other the other um explanation is on the on, on the first of the first part is already uh, i'm going to upload it today so just read the other portion up to the last part of the administrative law okay so read the, the cases okay um these are cases that explain what i have discussed so so um, may comment as well to the article that I posted. It's, it's an additional um, reading, so you have to make comment for for points. I'm going to give you um, points if you make comments. Okay, there are already articles that I posted, but only if you make comments. 